ಏವಾತ್ಮಾರನೋ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಮಥನೇ ಸತತ ಉದಿತಗತಿರ್ಜ್ವಾಲ ಸರ್ವಾಧನ ದೇವಾತ್ಮಾರನೋ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಮಥನೇ ಸತತ ಉದಿತಗತಿರ್ಜ್ವಾಲ ಸರ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾನೇಂಧನ Atma Aranav, the churning of the wood, the wood of Atma, Dhyana Mathane, the churning of contemplation. So the churning of the wood is compared to the contemplation on the Atma. and when you do that we say is the flame that arises burns the entire fuel of ignorance mm. now here he is drawing a, an analogy to a vedic ritual you and i may not be aware of it mm. you are not aware because we don't do it day in and day out in the olden days fire is considered as a symbol to represent brahman fire why is fire considered as the first symbol of brahman any idea all religions use it in some form or the other fire is considered as the first symbol of brahman i don't know whether you ever thought i am not going to ask hari ji so don't don't bug me by raising your finger you are bugging and annoying and irritating i will also use uh, very poetic words huh? crushing and pulverizing adha tho sonninga ella gap irukke i don't forget things that easily ram ji amongst all the elements i'm just giving you a cue sir amongst all the elements of space air fire water earth fire is considered as the first symbol of god representing god why is it so that is the only one which is pure it burns everything uh, and remains pure all other can become impure whether it is earth or air or sky or anything else so we are talking it's an interesting observation i i i uh, have to agree with you on that point but uh, why a little i just held back in accepting it entirely is because when you take the five elements you know remember when we learned this concept of panchikarana i don't know whether you were there whether you followed that mm-hmm. concept we talked about the five pure elements you know you know so the fire you perceive the the fire you and i see is actually impure fire technically speaking mm-hmm. do you recall the 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 the, the discussion on panchikarana no i don't know whether okay. i was there yeah okay rajima make a note uh, this particular verse whenever it was done gatrima it can be tapped and shared in the group so that they all can fall back on this particular verse which is the verse i'm not sure um quick reference uh, when which is the verse of panchikarana um, it has been a while we did that though uh it just comes much earlier uh ah, it is actually verse 12 sir 12th verse 
yeah the 12th was hari ji yes you're right 12th was talks about panchi karana and we had i remember a, a, a fabulous discussion trying to understand uh, what it is so uh, the what just to mention a point uh, the, the 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 elements that we see whether the water we drink the purest form of water is actually impure water the purest air you go to mansarovar or right up into the himalayas even there the air you breathe they say it is impure air with reference to how these elements that we perceive so he call as the elements before they go through panchikarana and after they go through panchikarana now panchikarana is just a process which these elements have gone through self division and mutual combination so it's a amazing nowhere else in the shastras it is mentioned except in this text atma bodha by the great adi shankaracharya so he mentions it and he 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 says that the elements we perceive are all gross so i give to you when you say it is uh, pure ushama and you have jointly said so i can't differ with you there you know so i don't know whether you had quickly any agreement to say that but uh, no usually there is many a time there is only disagreement which uh, any yes, household that is a surprise actually <laughs> <laughs> ushama you are where are you uh, she is not seen huh? no oh, there you are there you are yeah we are sitting any in sa- any rejoinder are, please we are sitting in separate rooms guru ji so that <laughs> <laughs> we don't uh, give i i mean uh, such surprises are not given by exchanging <laughs> <laughs> right so uh, yes so any any reason why uh, fire is wash by anybody else okay hari ji i have no choice but to come to you so your your annoyance has spread off <laughs> this the first element which can be seen the fire is the first element which is seen or perceived by the eyes space and air are not seen space air fire water earth in in amongst these five elements the subtlest is space the grossest is earth and fire is the first element which is perceived by the eyes so can you imagine a time on era where there was no electricity and the moment it was sun sun down after after sunset they are all plunged in darkness and darkness always associated with ignorance and darkness is insecurity and they are all exposed to nature in the woods in the himalayan valleys wherever they are and that little fire gave so much comfort in fact i do often watch all these uh, programs where people get into the wild and they live uh, i what who is that guy I, and i can't god i can't get his name who is the guy who explores and is very very famous even uh, you know modi ji came uh allah you along with him and then uh, you know rajnikanth went with him all the celebrities he keeps taking the celebrities is a very very famous chap and and on all of his expeditions and he he just is dropped by air into the extreme terrains and he tells you how to survive and you got to be extremely objective to sit to sit through his program perfect energy is bag grills right so you can just get a glimpse of what it is that kind of a life and uh, it sometimes inspires me to do that but then i can't do everything that he does you know he will eat the scorpions and snakes and whatever he gets there he'll start eating you know he has to live in the in the wild but uh, what i'm trying to tell is he is also says the most comforting thing is fire and he has some tools how he creates a spark to create fire now the olden days how did they use how what is it that they used to create fire here is a verse which talks about it they use a, a, an elongated piece of wood you clamp two pieces of wood along with it 
you tie a piece of rope on both ends and start churning. The sheer friction created between the two pieces of woods with the elongated piece of wood at the center, that friction, it creates a spark. Even the Vedic ritual of Yajna, it started only, you do only with the, the wood. You don't use a, a matchstick. I remember going into someone's office in Malaysia, a plush office, carpeted and whatnot. And he had a small uh, uh, altar in that office room. And he was wearing a, a suit, shoes decked up for his long day at office. And uh, he said, uh, Vinayji, just please wait just for two minutes. I said, yes, you please take your time. And he had a small place of altar. He wanted to light uh, a lamp and uh, incense sticks. You know what he did? He took a cigarette. He took a cigarette lighter. The third time it came and he lit the, 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 the lamp and the incense sticks did put the cigarette lighter back into the pocket and came back and our meeting started. I felt so uncomfortable. The fact that an, exp an innocuous experience like that has stuck in my mind to share with you. There is certain, obviously it's convenience. You know, you, everything is carpeted, it's air conditioned indoors. You don't want to strike a matchstick and, and start, you don't know where that spark could create, what could create. But the fact that you use a cigarette lighter to light a lamp, what is the association of thought? There's no auspiciousness to it. Well, he got it done with it and he carried on. It just meant nothing more to him. Hmm? So that concept of igniting the Rajima, that ritual of even lighting the, the first fire is known as? I, I don't know what it's known as Guruji, but uh, they use an arani, a, a small wooden bowl and then a cup kind of a thing, and there's a friction. The Agnihotrams uh, still do it the traditional way, Guruji. Uh, yes. So, it's and they far carry and that very far and few. Yes, 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 yes. So, this obvious reference to this has a very great, long traditional Vedic significance. Uh, Setuji? Yeah. No, no, I, I was just saying we should uh, evolve to such a stage we should see Brahman in lighter. <laughs> Thanks to you. No, 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 please don't. Please don't. I'm not saying Brahman there in a lighter. So don't replace your traditional methodologies with cigarette lighters, please. Huh? Then you'll have funny, then you'll have funny association of thoughts. So don't don't get into that. Right. Now, Ramji has got an interesting question. Ramji? Oh, yes. Hi. No, I was, uh, I didn't understand why because water and fire both we can see. So why fire gets the priority over water as the first one we see? Is because it is the subtlest of all elements of the subtlety. In that earth okay. also you see, isn't it? Yeah. Earth, fire, earth, water, fire. But in terms of subtlety, as I've said, in terms of grossification of elements, the subtlest is space. Grosser than space is air. Grosser than air is okay. fire. Grosser than fire is water. water. And the grossest okay. is earth. So of the grossification of elements, the first element in order of its subtlety is perceived is fire. Therefore, fire was worshipped. Okay. 
Oh, it's it you. you know we are rationalizing with it but when they did perhaps it it fell it all falls in its place and also as i've said fire great gave great comfort to them it gave them solace it gave them security so therefore they divinized it introduced in every aspect of ritual right from birth to death fire is an integral part even in a marriage you have fire you know it symbolizes uh, yeah. invoking fire is very symbolic uh, Uh, divinizing it isn't it yeah yeah correct uh, that yeah, smile so it does it ha 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 uh maybe <laughs> <laughs> right so so the the ritual okay hari ji thaanga mudila hari ji thaanga mudila na whatsapp na phone block panna inge eppadi block panna mudi therla enak huh solunga light also it represent knowledge Yes, the fire. Yes, yes. The fire. So, so the importance uh, of light or fire over uh, water. Because fire is knowledge. The light. Yes, sir. Correct. The fire always. We always represent the sun to be uh, knowledge or wisdom. The darkness to be ignorance. So it's an antidote. Yeah, right. Okay. So the. the verse uh, <clears throat> compares the churning of the wood to the contemplation so the contemplation is when you churn the two pieces of wood the friction creates fire which in turn burns the wood so the analogy of the churning is the friction created refers to the contemplation the contemplation is the negation of the lower and the assertion of the higher this is an integral part of our sadhana the spiritual sadhana can actually be expressed in this form where you say you negate the non essentials and assert the essentials you negate the terrestrial you assert the transcendental you negate the lower and assert the higher so this constant process of negation and assertion is drawn a parallel to the churning of the two woods which causes the friction and what is ignited the wisdom or the the fire so what is burnt is the fuel which is the inna rajima which is the ignorance kuruti no what is burnt is the ignorance now in the next verse we will see how does that ignorance manifest how is how can that ignorance when we say ignorance it has to be perceived it has to be a tangible tangible in something which you can measure so what how does that ignorance manifest i'll touch upon it uh the next verse we'll soon get into uh so the process of assertion negation the famous <clears throat> verse um which conveys this the famous concept which covers this is known as nitya anitya viveka vicharam the famous phrase nitya is eternal anitya is ephemeral nitya anitya viveka vicharam <clears throat> nitya is eternal anitya is ephemeral viveka is discrimination the discrimination between nitya and anitya vicharam is thought contemplation constant contemplation between the distinction between the real and unreal 
that is the sadhana which is compared to the churning of the two woods the churning of the wood nitya anitya viveka vichara so the whole perception of what is real what is unreal it's purely subjective is pure it's something which constantly changes during the course of your your journey in life when you were a teenager what was real to you vis a vis now when you look back at your life and say is that any more real to you badri ji what was real to you when you were a teenager what was real to you when you were perhaps in your in your corporate career in your mid 30s and 40s or 50s when you are trying to scale up the ladder being an entrepreneur or a business and whatever be the field of your work what was that which was real to you then you really want to hear that <laughs> <laughs> no just not not i'm i don't have any ask questions is not personal huh yeah generally when you are involved in building a career um the living of um interacting with the world outside you there are certain first of all what are the aspects inside you you know there's ambition okay there are external goals uh, that you need to achieve and all that so it's it's a more extroverted extroverted uh, phase of life but as you withdraw from that uh, in my case through retirement but you can withdraw from that in many ways okay um, for instance you have never withdrawn from that through retirement okay so, <laughs> but in my case it was that that way so different people withdraw in different ways so once you withdraw from that then you become more introverted um, introspective now there is always that element if personally there was always that element in me okay so that introverted nature was always there in the midst of the external uh, involvement so Indeed. it's just a balancing thing the, which which needed to uh, be given greater importance and uh, automatically as you withdrew from the involvement in the outside world the, your real nature which in my case was an introverted nature that i said i don't know whether i have answered your question no you have successfully not revealed the truth <clears throat> you are very successful in not revealing the truth but we got the message <laughs> no no see is there is that that exuberance of youth and passion and there's passion for power there's passion for wealth there's passion for for proprietorship you want to succeed you want to create a mark there is so much of passion involved in, in certain yeah, i call it ambition yeah see ambition always has a very sattvic connotation right. you know in philosophical language you know okay. when you have a aim or an ambition or a goal or a purpose it is very divine divinely driven there's something beyond your own selfish self centered or own one's own gratification uh, so i just i'm not being personal at all you understand that but just that at that age where there is is like when when you see a child you know uh, i remember uh, i i very vividly remember you know whenever i used to go to these toy shops you know uh, with my uh, uh, just to pick up a toy or just take my daughter uh, to walk into this toy store and see what she wants and i used to see these uh, a uh, small miniaturized uh, uh, vehicles you know automobiles you know different and they used to have and they were marketed under this company hot wheels remember that isn't it um it it must have been a global thing because you found it everywhere and uh, and different different types and i i could so vividly recall i having a, a double decker bus in a beige color i had a small car red car and so much i was attached to it and if that small wheel broke i used to somehow see how can i repair it and how to make sure it when i pull it 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 had to flow with me and it never should not tumble and fall off and all my little collectibles and i look back at that 
childishness of mine at those young days you know i'm able to bring that analogy into my life and start so what am i to do here what is the message here obviously we'll say balastavat krida saktah tarunastavat taruni saktah vriddhastavat chinta saktah parame brahmani opina saktah i suppose you understand that in the bhagavad gita we says as a child you are lost in the toy world as a youth you are lost in passion as an old man you are lost in worries and anxieties today i was talking to someone and not not to mention that person's name yesterday night that person spoke to me and that person said something to me and this morning again that person spoke to me and said the same thing to me and i told this is the sign of you getting old because you are repeating same thing that you told me yesterday night only in that person was laughing thanks guru ji for reminding me i i know i must be mindful i'm 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 bugging you nagging you with all love as hari ji says with all the love nagging me you know and i'm not saying hari ji is nagging me that person was nagging me with all the love i said you are getting old na huh? because you are repeating same thing what you said yesterday night to me you know chinta sakta hai you keep worrying and you know you start you you not you don't snap it you keep repeating yourself again and again unnecessary that's a sign of old age so it is justifiable if a child is lost in toys or youth with passion or you're worrying but then he says hardly anybody thinks of the higher now bringing that analogy here if you are able to inject that wisdom into whatever stage you are in your life whatever phase of life you are into if the wisdom is there you will start seeing the childishness in that act wherever you are there is a certain childishness there is certain uh, i don't know what's another word reddy garu is there another word for childishness in every phase of our life yes very much guruji pranam yes sir yeah, what is a, do, a, yeah exact word you mean to say guruji no no uh, i was only trying to uh, ask you if there is any other word that describes or something which you can explain that childishness in every phase of our life this guru ji as as i strongly believe like uh, as a tree grows the wisdom grows as age grows through and the most important intelligent uh, decisions which always in the corporate world we took it sometime back when you realize it i think is the most foolish decisions we taken now at this moment of a time i said uh, had it been those this amount of wisdom had it been there i think we would have been something right. different so every time when you contemplate and when you start reviewing all your past i think either it's because of your continuous involvement and trying to get more to understand uh, i think the more i strongly feel about your growth of learning is taking step by step to the next level had it been the learning has been stalled most probably the relation could have been same and more maybe worse but as we learning more as the learning is happening from which ever maybe the directions from the sasang or interactions and the hard lessons we we'll learn from the life we feel that the most of the not all the time but most of the time we feel that the decisions and the intelligence and the wisdom is growing indeed indeed and when we look back is i wish i had this clarity yes. at that stage to have made a wiser choice isn't it so there there's the little childishness or immaturity to be in, unable to look at things from a from a grander perspective from a wiser perspective no that's at every stage so uh, that if you are able to bring that light into our current challenges and experiences now what happens we are not swept away by the challenge so we understand that it is a problem but it is not remember the concept we learned in bhajagovindam there is something called as the absolute reality yeah visa we no reality visa we a relative reality the shastras are saying the world is no real correct yes guru from the perspective of these gurus the world is not real but from our perspective the world is very much real but it is ever changing no 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 not changing la solavingo <laughs> you know 
the drive i had to take the drive from my house to the center is not more than 3 minutes i just have to take a couple of turns and come here and 4 o'clock when i left to visit the center i went through the ritual lockdown or no lockdown my ritual went through came in the morning worked till afternoon went back there was such a bhaya in me where am i going to see this police fellow you know at even 4 o'clock when i left every corner i'm coming and seeing is there a police fellow and then come the next turn is there anywhere police fellow you know otherwise you are in for trouble so for me i can't go to upanishad master and say enna sir world is a illusion if a police fellow comes to me i can't tell him brahma satyam jagat mithya he will give you a whip and say this also is mithya he will tell me ha <laughs> huh? is it absolute reality this is absolute reality <laughs> now so this is what we got to play by the rules of the world but don't make the world an absolute reality where it sits on your head and starts bow, starts become a, a pain in the neck let it be real to the extent you have to deal with it not to the extent it causes pain and sleeplessness and restlessness so if this way we can inject the negation of the lower so if i start negating the worries and anxieties with your work the anxiety that your work creates the restlessness that your work creates the pressures and the attachments so if i am negating the attachment if i am negating my possessiveness if i am negating my egoistic notions and start embracing the work i am negating the lower i am enjoying the higher the higher is i am able to bring divinity into my work isn't it there's a beautiful simple saying the saying is think like a man of action act like a man of thought Harish ji can you capture that please the quote says think like a man of action and act like a man of thought i think it's such a profound statement you think like a man of action and act like a man of thought what do you what do you make sense of that statement think like a man of action sir you are adding more into the quote the quote has nothing more dot 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 and dot 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 is not there think like a man of action comma act like a man of thought so you delete the dot 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 i always have this problem with harish ji everywhere you put dot 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 so please don't copy all i didn't say dot 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 and also is not there why then uh, sorry vijay raghavan ji can you tell me what does this quote mean thanks sir ji i will try my level best to <laughs> articulate guru ji uh, i think it stands for think dynamically in the sense that do not wait immerse yourself and think about whatever you want to do but while executing it uh, be still peacefully and be deliberate and uh, the acting. quote has the quote has two halves the first half is says think like a man of action what does it mean think without hesitation think without you know you you actively uh, not avoiding the thinking part of it and acting is to be still and peace uh, you know with uh, clarity this is what i understood i i'm not saying you're wrong but i'm just trying to draw more out of it you know because there's a lot more to it you know not that you're wrong so when he says think like a man of action what okay if i were to help you in trying to draw more out of it when you have mere thinking without acting what is the use of having this knowledge without living the knowledge this is of is it of any use sir no i talk high fly but i don't i don't come anywhere close to living by the values which i believe in so so the 
importance of knowing some things to live it isn't it so when you think you think in terms of implementing them in your lives what is the use of all this knowledge if you don't live it so you think like a man of action you bring dexterity to your action it has to translate into efficiency productivity smartness skillfulness dexterous isn't it so think like a man of action and when you act you act like a man of thought which means as you said rightly so with with uh, no other agitation totally focusing and fully concentrating on what you do okay uh, what would what is an action which is not a rational action what is opposed to rational action impulsive impulsive correct when somebody does something without giving it enough thought it is impulsive it is emotion driven and all those actions cause a little restlessness within as you said it destroys your peace of mind it agitates you it ruffles you up isn't it so if you examine that quote in this angle it is very very profound a mere knowledge without action is useless an action without thought without intellect is also useless yes hari ji you're right you want to convey anything hari ji here so if i am i was only commenting that to my discussion with srinivas reddy garu you may wonder why suddenly this quote has come in when we are trying to examine how to look at your current situation from a wise perspective when you give when you rationalize it you will bring in only a sense of relativity to it not a sense of absoluteness and then get carried away you see so if you look at relatively and objectively you will find things have to be dealt with it is not the end of the world work has to go on salaries have to be paid things have to be met but if that doesn't if it's not met the world is not going to come to an end if that be so that be so death of something is only going to be a birth of another thing isn't it so why should i worry about it so much so if 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 one doesn't philosophize it at that moment and bring in that sense of relativity it only bogs us down isn't it so that is the practicality of looking at nitya anitya viveka vicharam but absolute level to dismiss the entire world as anitya and the brahman alone is nitya that is that changeless everything else is ch- changing is perishable this churning ignites the the fire which burns the fuel now what is the interesting point there's something beyond this obvious do you all see anything beyond the obvious in that example in the example of the wood being churned the fire being ignited and the fuel being burned is there anything beyond the obvious interpretation we gave is something fabulous see what's the interesting point is when the wood is churned you get the fire isn't it now where do you get the fire from gayatri ma Self. from the wood itself yes and what is burnt wood itself please can you make don't make irrational statement why i don't i don't understand this how can fuel and fire be in the same thing isn't it yes 
the fire is the wood is in the wood the fuel is the wood so the fire and fuel are in that same piece of wood so what is the what is the analogy compared to now because everything in the example we compare to something now this aspect of the fire and fuel being the wood what is the analogy what's the comparison here this term there are two things here huh? one no, I... is the one is the fire other is the fuel three things here the fire the fuel and the wood so what are the three things knowledge wisdom and the ignorance getting burnt ama knowledge ignorance separate panninga convenient ah separate pannungo rendu me onnu dane both are same isn't it knowledge is just bookish knowledge unless we practice it it becomes a wisdom and yeah, but we are not we are not we are not drawing that kind of a difference in the context are we we are not doing that we are not separating knowledge and wisdom as such it's the brahman atman itself amma too many guesses you had you have already your quota is finished uh, no no uh, the fuel and the fire packed into one the knowledge and ignorance are packed into one the question is what is the comparison of that knowledge and ignorance packed into one which thing you said correct ignorance and wisdom are present in the same thing which is what is it what is the comparison the comparison is that spirit and matter are there in one form and which form are they where are they where is it where is spirit and matter right within me isn't it shiva ji until you get your bandwidth you better only communicate through sign language huh? we'll only understand you through sign language you're right the fire symbolizes the spirit and the wood symbolizes matter which is the fuel which is the ignorance the spirit and matter are there in the wood which is a human so the process of churning refers to the assertion of the higher and the negation of the lower burns of the, the ignorance and what it reveals is the self all okay sedraman sir so just that mere ritual has so much to convey hmm? any 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 doubts fall clear we'll move on okay 43 uh...